This RV industry update will get me into trouble with some RV dealerships, RV factories, and RV corporate YouTubers. But to me, the juice is worth the squeeze. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the honey badger because I give it to you straight and transparent about the RV business. It's March 1st, 2024, and here is your update. I am going to do this a little different than I normally do because it was really windy outside. So first off, I'm gonna be looking at my laptop to kind of compare notes. And number two, of course, we're inside the trailer. So if I look back and forth, I'm looking at my laptop and my notes, so that way I don't go on for hours, okay? So the first subject we're gonna cover, first subject we're going to cover is frame flex slash frame failure slash construction problems. And there's gonna be some RV corporate YouTubers that are not gonna really be happy with me about that, okay? Uh, number two, I'm gonna go over some of the rumor mill things that are going on out there, just kind of tie it together and give you some context in them. Number three, I'm gonna go over RV interest rates and RV loans, kind of give you my normal monthly update on that. Number four, I'm also going to give you my monthly update on service and warranty and parts. And number five, I'm going to go over some miscellaneous good stuff. Frame flex, frame failure, and construction problems with fifth wheels. Now, first off, I want to say there were a lot of you, and I mean a lot of you, that reached out to me in the last six weeks to tell me your stories about your fifth wheel and frame problems you're having, okay? And I'm very appreciative. I thank you guys so much for feeling comfortable sharing that information with me. I know a lot of you are very concerned and worried about manufacturer retaliation. And I understand that feeling. I mean, I probably in your shoes would feel the same way, okay? Um, if you haven't shared that information with me and you would like to, in the description box below, I have all my social media links. I also have my email. And then I added something special. I put a new Facebook group link. I don't run it. A manufacturer doesn't run it. This is privately run by a few customers. And it's all about frame failure. So you might want to check that out. Now, I found it interesting, as I'm talking about that, I found it very, very interesting that there were videos that were released by some folks that claimed that this was only affecting COVID units, okay? Now, these weren't anybody connected to dealerships or the manufacturer. These were just kind of full-time RV folks that kind of want to put their two cents in. And I, hey, I get it 100%. They have their concerns as well. But I remember, and I made notes here earlier uh, today, that I remember that back in the mid-2000s, Weekend Warrior fifth wheels and some Keystone Montana fifth wheels had a similar problem, okay? And then I've gotten data from folks that have sent me their stories about 2014 fifth wheels, 2016 fifth wheels, 2018, 19 fifth wheels. That's all prior to COVID. So this isn't centralized as far as I can tell. Stop me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. But from my experience, I can tell that this isn't just related to COVID, okay? Now, there were other YouTube personalities that were connected to RV dealerships or RV factories that decided to release videos about frame flex in February. There were a couple of them that claimed that less than 3% of fifth wheels across all brands are affected by frame flex or frame failure. And then there was a very popular, very famous RV YouTuber that's connected to a dealership that sells uh, grand design products that claims that one half of 1% of all fifth wheels across all brands have this kind of problem. So it brought up some questions. I'm going to read off the questions I had, okay? Because 
it just brought questions to my mind. So I'm going to read them out loud. I'm not going to answer them, but I'm going to read them out loud. Number one, how was this data collected? Okay, so I have received numerous complaints that there are manufacturers out there that do not communicate well with the customer. And in some cases, I've received uh, information from folks saying that their social media posts are being removed out of owners groups. So that being said, again, how was the data collected if that's true? Number two, is the data these YouTubers actually sharing 100% accurate? Number three, if it is accurate, why are the manufacturers not acknowledging the problem? Number four, if they have accurate data, why are there reports all over YouTube and social media of customers and shoppers going to a specific manufacturer's uh, section and the employees that work for the manufacturer and the salespeople are either walking away from them or avoiding the subject altogether. Hmm. Number five, why are famous RV dealership YouTubers delivering the information instead of there being a press release about it or maybe a recall? Number six, if this information is accurate, who collected it? Was it a third party that's not affiliated with the manufacturers or Lippard? And number seven, which is the last one I could think of is, can customers trust data delivered by a YouTuber whose company depends on the sale of specific fifth wheel brands? I'm going to leave that to you. In fact, if you guys have any thoughts behind any of those questions, leave me a comment or send me an email. Okay. Now, on a positive side of this, and I know it's very hard to be on a positive side of this, but I want to mention that I watched a, uh, a YouTube channel uh, the other day. It's called, uh, I'm going to have to, sorry, look at my notes intensely here. Enjoy the Journey Life. Okay, and what I got out of it is that they have a current fifth wheel that's built by uh, a manufacturer that's got a lot of heavy complaints right now, and they are seeing problems. Okay, but they also mentioned I I I heard something, and I know they breezed by it because I think they've covered it a lot in their earlier YouTube videos. But prior to them getting this 200,000 plus people following, they had a 2017 Columbus fifth wheel that had the same problems, okay, or similar problems. And it seems to me the way he put it was Forest River, who owns Columbus, was on top of it, okay, and that they were very responsive and took care of the problem. Well... Let me rephrase that, because he says they took care of the problem quickly. Well, I can only assume RV quickly, <laughs> because I know how slow manufacturers can be when it comes to the service and warranty side, but that's for a different story. Okay, so again, let me know what you guys think. I, I really want to hear what you think, because, I mean, that's, I don't know, there's a lot of question marks with what has been said over the last couple of weeks. Ah, yes, the dreaded rumor mill. We all love that, right? <laughs> Only a couple things to really cover here. The main one to cover is there's a lot of rumors on the internet, especially going through the whole month of February, that are hinting that half of the brands are just going to disappear out of the RV business completely. Now, while I believe that we will lose some brands, and justifiably so, we should... Uh, at the end of the day, it will be a very slow process if that happens. Now, where a lot of this comes from is speculation because Forest River and Keystone and a few other manufacturers have announced that they are closing down factories. 
but they're not eliminating the brand. Some of the brands have been absorbed into other factories. Some of them are being absorbed completely into another brand, etc. So I don't think we're gonna lose half of the brands by the end of April, like a lot of folks claim. I know some will end up going away, but it'll take time before that actually happens, okay? Uh, number two, um, Nomad Internet uh, offered me a free year of internet plus the modem, the battery, and the travel pack, and it's this bad boy right here if you guys recognize this, okay? I want to cover this because there's going to be rumors started that I'm selling out to a company that is in a lawsuit and scammed people, things of that nature. When I saw this, you guys, I want to give you a little background on this. First off, I've used Starlink. When I lived in my Cougar fifth wheel up in Oregon with my wife and my kids, we had Starlink. And it really works intermittently in different areas of Southern Oregon, okay? And when I got offered this, I was like, hmm, let me battle test this thing because maybe down the road, and I'm not saying now, but maybe down the road, there will be another company that does something that will be similar to this that works better. Okay, so far I've had a decent experience with it. I'm going to do kind of a 30-day trial thing where I'm going to do a series of videos. I know they're in a lawsuit. RV Miles did an incredible video about all the crap that they ca caused. He did April 2023. This is more or less when I did my homework on it. I'm like, it's almost a year later. Let's just see what happens. I'm not expecting people to buy it. In fact, if you'll notice in the description boxes of both videos I did in order to get this, I didn't even put a link to the website. I didn't put a code or anything of that nature, okay? Uh, and if I did accidentally, I deleted it, all right? So I just want to make sure you guys understand that realistically, the only thing I'm going to sell are the products that are either linked in the videos or the merchandise store that I'm going to open up starting, I believe it's going to open up on March 4th for t-shirts, hats, floozies, etc. Okay. And the last little thing I want to squash on the rumor side is I am not against Camping World. I'm not against Lazy Days. I'm not against anybody. Okay. All I do is report the information that I get from my sources. And my sources okay, are very reputable. I'll never share them unless they allow me to share them because I don't want to lose that relationship that I've developed over the last 12 years. In some cases, 15 years. So I hope you guys understand that. You know, it, things change sometimes weekly, monthly, and I try to keep you up to date with it. In fact, I've got my podcast that I really try to keep you up to date on and stuff like that. So I just want to make sure that that's an understanding, okay? RV loan and RV interest rate update. Now where I want to start is inflation is still high on a lot of key goods in our economy in the United States and even in Canada, as some of my friends have pointed out, okay? So where I see things going... Well, at the time I released this video, the Fed chair has not spoken yet. But according to the data that I have collected so far, it does not look like the Fed is going to lower interest rates yet. Now, what I did notice is that there was a slight increase in interest rates on the RV loan side by about a quarter of a point. So I'm starting to see loans more in the 7.25 range up to the... 8.25 range. So slightly up from 6.99 to 7.99. Now it wasn't a big increase, but it looked like whatever they were giving up, they kind of added back in. If I were to guess why, the guess would be is they were expecting, and I'm talking about banks in general, were expecting more loans to be processed in the month of February. And of course, the West Coast, we're talking about everybody west of the Mississippi, outside of Texas, had a really, really bad uh, February in retail sales. And me personally, here at the dealership, I mostly dealt with subprime loans. I only did a couple of people that had good credit. And that's what I kind of noticed, was 
it went from like a rate around six nine nine to a rate around seven and a quarter. And then I've seen another one that was like eight and a quarter that was normally seven nine nine. So just look for that expectation. I think really if if February was a bigger retail month, I believe the banks wouldn't have done that. Okay. I really don't. I don't think I think if they got the volume they were looking for, they probably wouldn't have had that happen. But hey, say la vie. Um, if you're wondering what a quarter point does to your actual payment, what you'd want to do is do a 15-year calculator, okay, and look at a $25,000 loan at $699 and one at seven and a quarter, and you'll kind of get an idea or a gauge of how much your payment will go up. And you'll be surprised, you'll be surprised it's not that much very, very little. But in the grand scheme of things, I don't think interest rates overall are going to tank downward for a long time. If I were to take a guess, now at this point, updating myself, I would say probably around summer of 2026, when we would actually see it affect the recreation industry. I believe, truly in my heart, that it'll affect the mortgage business a lot faster and the car business a lot faster than it's going to affect the boat, the power sports, or the RV industry. RV parts and RV warranty update March 2024. Now, what I want to start with is there's some concern that the blockade happening in the Red Sea is going to slow down some parts that come to the United States and to Canada. And that probably probably is true, but I haven't seen it happen yet. Outside of a couple specialty products that customers wanted that I got personally refunded on saying it can't get shipped out to the U.S. at this time, for the most part, I've been able to get hitches, uh, battery boxes, all the basic stuff I've been able to get a lot faster and in a more regular flow, I guess you could call it, okay? Now, on the RV warranty side, especially on the extended warranty side, it seems like we're getting a better flow of getting approvals from these extended warranty companies to do the work. I noticed probably halfway through December, through most of January, it was pulling teeth getting even the manufacturers to approve warranty work as and again, extended warranty work as well. So I believe what kind of happened in all that is people are finally back from vacation and being forced to sit their butt in the office and actually work. Or option B, which I'm not sure about, but option B is they finally hired some more people because they had to. Now, I personally know that there are a few brands on the wholesale side, on the manufacturing side, that only have one warranty representative for the whole country. So, yeah, I would pull my hair out of my head, right? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, the other thing I really want to mention to everybody is there are a lot of brands and manufacturers, even ones that I sell, that have the LG uh, refrigerator, the residential refrigerator in it. Now, there's a lot of people that have reached out to me and said that they're having problems getting the circuit boards for that LG refrigerator. So what I did was I reached out to my contact at LG, and yes, they are a little behind getting circuit boards shipped over to the U.S., but it, that delay will be shortened pretty quickly. So if you're having a residential refrigerator problem and you're waiting for a circuit board and that's the problem, give it a couple more weeks and I believe they'll have those circuit boards flowing a lot better. I know I'm waiting on two of them. Now don't tell any of the manufacturers, but I rob circuit boards out of stuff on the lot to take care of the customer. But you didn't hear that from me, right? <laughs> Okay, let's talk about some miscellaneous fun stuff, okay? So first off, I want to thank everyone for their support. Without all of your guys' viewership and your support, this channel would not be growing the way it's growing, and I'm really appreciative of it, okay? Uh, some of the fun stuff that's going on 
is I'm going to start a merchandise store. I believe it's uh, March 4th, which is Monday, March 4th, where online you can buy uh, shirts, baseball caps, uh, coffee mugs, floozies, etc. And it's really exciting for me because I worked on this new logo with a, a graphic designer. And it, it felt like to me the first time I got the PlayStation 1. Like it was that exciting to, to watch this creation unveil. And uh, I want to thank that guy for it. And I actually will. I don't want to mention his name because he asked me not to. But um, I'm really appreciative of him. Um, anyway, and, and a lot of you are like, wait a minute. You're going to have merchandise? Are you going to make money on it? Yes, of course I'm going to make money on it. Uh, but here's what I'm going to do with the money is what's important. So half of the net profit, and what I mean by net profit is after expenses and after taxes, I'm going to set aside half the net profit and reinvest it into the channel. So that way you know. So better cameras, better microphones, uh, probably a newish laptop because... Right now, I work on a lot of free stuff or stuff that's cheap, okay? So try to get some better equipment to get better quality videos out to you guys. And number two, I decided the other half of the net profit I'm actually going to use at my local community because there's a lot of full-time RVers in really old rigs that don't have the money to fix them up. So my ego, and I I know that's a... Wow, you got an ego? Yeah, I have an ego. My ego and my desire to help people uh, makes me want to do that. And I believe if I had the money to do it, I could help folks fix up their older rigs, especially if they're on Social Security or on a really, really, really constrained, confined and constricted fixed income. Um, and yes, I'm going to film it. You know, I want to film it for the channel because I think it'll also be healthy for people to see people reaching out and helping other people. And I was, and, and if you're wondering where this came from, it, it was more of an inspiration that came from watching Mr. Beast for the last three months. If you guys don't know who Mr. Beast is, he's got like 200 million subscribers and he has a philanthropy channel. And watching that off and on has kind of inspired me to do that. So just realize that if you buy merchandise, there's three things that's really going to help me out with. Number one, it's going to get me better equipment. That way I can make the channel a, a lot better quality, in my opinion. Okay, I, I, I appreciate everybody reaching out and telling me I'm doing a good job, but I know I could do better if I had the better equipment. Number two, I want to help the, commu the, the community out here in Pahrump, Nevada. And number three, if you guys wear the merchandise, it's just going to bring attention to the brand. And I'd really appreciate it if you guys went to shows with it and stuff like that. I'm going to start wearing it on the channel. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And I have a goal. My goal is by December 31st, 2024, I want to get to 100,000 subscribers. And I think that merchandise uh, will actually help spread the word and get people to maybe look at the channel I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I do understand that. You know, probably there's probably 15, 20% of people that can't stand me. I mean, I get I've gotten the nickname the Donald Trump of the RV business because I give it to the way give it to people the way it is. I kind of feel like, wow, that's a compliment. And then some people it's like they're not saying it as a compliment, they're saying it as like you're evil and an idiot. But that's okay. That's understandable. Um but I do want to reach out and say that um, there's some things on half-ton towables that I want to cover. And you know what? In fact, I cover some of the half-ton towable stuff, half-ton towable fifth-wheel uh, education in that video right there.